Hey, what's up, friends? I pray and hope that you guys are doing well. Real quick, I just wanted to let you know that if you have a CDL license, whether you are out of training or you already have experience and you think JB Hunt may be a good fit for you, I encourage you to send me your name and your phone number. My email is moses at driversuccess.com or you can use the link in the description below. It's the very first link. It will take you to my website and there will be a form that you can uh, fill out. That form will come with your information to me. I will ask Susan to give you a call uh, so that she can see what is available in your area. Again, remember, this is for those of you that are just out of training and for those of you that have experience and those of you that may be interested, like in um, if you are an own operator and you want to see if you can bring your truck to JB Hunt, uh, again, just reach out to me. I will ask Susan to give you a call and then Susan will see what is available in your area. All right, friends, let me get leave you get to the video. I'll talk to you soon. Hey, what's up, friends? It's Moses here from Driver Success. I hope and pray that you guys are doing well. Today we have another guest, uh, Mr. Nelms, who is here with us. Again, just like the uh, the other guests that we had on before, I also got to know about Mr. Nelms when um, he came, like, uh, what's that podcast? Truck and Hustle podcast Truck came Hustle, across my yeah. YouTube uh, channel and uh, they were he was interviewing Mr. Nelms. So um, when I listened to the interview, there are two things that really touched me, and I said I have to see if I can get him on here. The first things that uh, the first thing that you said that touched me, Mr. Nelms, is um, the gentleman on the podcast was asking you what was the question. I think you are talking about consultation. So he was asking you how how much do you charge for consultation, and well, you told well, him uh, nothing. Right, and right, he's right. like nothing i mean it takes time and and you replied and you said yes it takes time but i have the time right and you said that uh, the reason you do it is because you have been blessed already now you have the time so uh because you've been blessed you are able to bless back and i don't remember the exact line you said but it was something like i have at the end of it all it comes out to to mean that i have been blessed to be a blessing Right, right, right. So I would that, say that, you know, the greatest ability is the ability to bless others. Yes, so, that, so that really time, blessed me. You know, it was um, at that time, and it was just, it, it, was, it was, you know, obviously it was, a, it was a good time in my life. So I was, I had so much free time, right? And, and, yeah. and I think it's just because we created it that way, right? So I think a lot of times when you are dealing in the trucking industry, um, the, the one of the major benefits, because it is stressful, it's a lot of stress, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of energy that you have to put into it every single day, that when you have that that time to just have that solitude, to be alone and just kind of reflect, um, we take advantage of that. You know, the, the, the ability to be able to, I know yesterday we, we jumped on, we, we spoke briefly yesterday, I ran to the cabins, right? Just on a random, just woke up, packed the bag, drove a little hour down the road just to get away. And, and I think trucking is a blessing because it gives me that ability to do that. I'm able to just kind of move how I see fit. There's, there's no, there's no schedule every day. You know, there's no, I have to get up at a certain time and get to work and then come home and prepare the meal for my kid. It's, it's a, it's free time. So I have time to think and plan for what's to come next. Right. So, yeah. Um, and, and I always tell people like in trucking, when you have that downtime, take some of it and come up with solutions for issues that you know are going to arise at some point, right? So, um, you know, don't don't wait for an issue to, to to come about and think about how would you handle it in your mind. You should already be you should already be thinking, you know, hey, this is going to happen at some point in time. Let me have a solution for it before the problem comes about, right? So, just taking that time and not just you know, um, doing away with it, but using it wisely, taking some of it and actually just planning for what's to come. So is is that the reason you are taking some time off just to kind of think about uh, some of the solutions that, that you want to come up in your business? Definitely, definitely. And and just to get away, because again, this trucking, depending on, um, you know, what you put into it, obviously reciprocity is what you're going to get, get, get out of it. So we go higher. That's one thing that I pride myself on. We 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 don't stop. We're always figuring something out. We're always handling a situation, and and trucking. That's that's how it is. The, the the deeper you get into this, the more things are going to come about. Um, but it's really just 
It's really just playing it. It's really like if you plan for these things, you know that certain breakdowns are going to happen. You know, you know tires are going to blow out. Already have an extra tire or two on the truck. You know, trailer tire is going to go. Have one up under the trailer. Like, you know, just plan it for things that you know are going to happen um, so that when it does happen, you don't miss a beat, right? Because, you know, yeah. the, the whole concept of the trucking is just to save time, right? It's, it's you want to you wanna use every minute of the day in your in, in your truck routes to make more money. And if you can alleviate expensive breakdowns, breakdowns that you know are going to happen, if you can save some of that time, that driver can stay on the road. So you just, you know, when you are when you are leasing people onto your company, you have to have solutions to every problem. Because most people that you lease on, they may be new in the industry. And they're not just looking for you to dispatch them. They're not just looking for you to help them stay compliant. They're looking for you as a mentor. They expect you to be able to help them find solutions to these issues. I keep saying solutions and problems, right? Because that's just trucking. And people who don't have solutions for these issues, you know, they're, they're sitting on the sideline a little bit too long. So let's go back to the beginning. How did you get into trucking? Um, I had a medical office for about 10 years, um, medical firm. We did billing and coding and some collection. And uh, a friend of mine came into the office and just a simple question. He said, hey, you ever think about getting into trucking? And of course, you know, my bread and butter was, was the medical firms, the medical hospitals. And I didn't think about trucking at that at that time. This is, you know, almost eight years ago now. So we, put, we took a shot at it. He said, listen, let's get a truck. I had a couple of dollars saved up, so I just went and bought a box truck. And that's how it all started. You know, I um, bought a box truck. I learned on a box truck. And we grew to a, to a, to a handful of box trucks. Um, and then we realized that the semi game was like major league, minor league, right? You can make money in both, but semi is just a little bit more appealing to us um, as far as how much we can um, how much we can make per load. So then we just started buying semi trucks and, and trailers, dry van trailers, and we went to reefer trailers. So it was it was a process, and it's still an ongoing process. So the the friend that came to you, did he was he already in trucking? He wasn't. He wasn't in the trucking. Well, he wasn't really in trucking. Truck. So it was like it was like the blind leading the blind, right? It was like <laughs> the blind leading the blind. Like, we didn't okay. know what we were doing. Um, we, we we didn't know what we were doing. We just knew hire a driver, put a driver in there. We didn't. We weren't. We weren't so concerned with DOT regulations because we didn't know what they were. You know, we literally just jumped in it blind. Um, and so sometimes when I'll post about um, the educational side of trucking, and then I get someone to jump on the post and say, "Man, you don't have to. You don't have to take classes. Um, it's foolish. You have to invest money into yourself, into the educational process of trucking before you get into trucking. If not, you'll be like a cowboy, like I was eight years ago, just losing money, burning money, and didn't." Didn't realize how much money I wasn't making um, because I was so new in the industry. I made so many mistakes. So, you know, education is the only equalizer. My brother, Dr. Sean Nelms, he, al he always said, you know, walk around the house and, you know, he always say, hey, education is the only equalizer. And this is coming from a doctor, so I'm going to stick with it, right? He, and he's a doctor of education. So um, I, take, I take that serious. You have to educate yourself. You have to take some of these classes. And if you don't want to take the classes, get on Google and start reading, you know, read, read at least a couple hours a day on how to properly run your trucking company, or you can lease on with a company and let them mentor you and guide you for the first six months to a year. And then, then you'll be ready to get on your own. Okay. So you get into trucking, you have box trucks, and then uh, when do you make the decision to move from box trucks into semi trucks? And how was that transition? In like a year, year and a half, when I started to mentally transition, maybe a year, year, about a year, year and a half, I started to mentally transition to something different, something bigger. And the good thing in trucking, it's always room for growth. It's always room to add more to your fleet, add more, um, more tools to your belt. Like now, we offer dispatch training for the last maybe year, um, but we had we had we we did it like some years back. And it was it was pretty cool. We just kind of strayed away from it to focus on other things, like lease some people on. Um, so now we, you know, we offer that service when people are owner operators and they don't have a home. We'll allow them to lease on under our company. So um, in, in trucking, you're always, you know, if 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 you really want to stay in this business a long time, you have to always learn how to um, continuously grow. I'm not saying reinvent yourself, but reinvent your company. You know, take it from from just one stream of income to five or six. And that's that's how you to me, that's how you stay afloat in this industry. It's a little easier when you have pockets of money coming in from different aspects of trucking. So when you have those four or five thousand dollar breakdowns, it's really not an issue. 
uh, because you have money coming from the dispatching or the consultations or renting trailers or leasing people on your fleet or buying your own trucks, selling your own trucks and trailers. So there should be, I mean, that that's at least six, seven ways that I just ran off where we actively are, are making money from each of those streams. Like, and so that's that's one thing um, that I think it'll help you stay afloat. Um, putting the drivers first, right? So um, one thing I always do is I, I listen to my drivers, right? Um, I give them open floor, open communication. We talk all day, every day with all our drivers, actually. And, you know, it, it's, it's so that we can learn, right? We need to, because trucking is always evolving. So you want to know what the newest trends are. You want to know what's going on at this warehouse, why it took so long to get loaded, as opposed to this one, so you know how to dispatch properly. The drivers, you know, they're, they're not just your muscle, they're your, your, your eyes and your ears out there on the road, right? So I listen to what drivers need. I can tell when they start to get a little burnt out and they need some home time. Right. So instead of them going over the road, I'll pull them for a month and I'll let them just do local runs. Let them let them be home every day, even though their contract is set for over the road. Then after I feel like they kind of knock the cobwebs off, we put them back over the road. But you have to be able to listen to your driver and learn from your driver. And that to me, that's that is one of the biggest tools that you can use in this industry, other than learning how to dispatch, learning your freight, learning your lanes. Is, is to know what's going on with your drivers. Actually listen to your drivers. Don't have an ego as to where, you know, I'm the owner, I have 10 trucks, I don't gotta listen. Yes, you do. You gotta humble yourself and you gotta listen to what these drivers are telling you. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted you to come on because most of the um, audience that I have is truck drivers, right? And most of them work for big companies. And one of the things that I really had you say is that, uh, you know, like through your your failures and, you know, like trying to learn about the industry, one of the things you came to realize is that the driver was the heart and soul of the trucking industry. Absolutely. And so you started concentrating on, on you know, like the driver, making the driver happy. And so I wanted, I, I want you to tell us as drivers, uh, when you are looking for a driver, what are the most important things that you are looking for if you are looking for a driver to hire? So, so that's a good question. First of all, we're looking for about four drivers. We just we just acquired four more trucks, so that's a blessing. Oh, wow. And you know, with, with that comes comes work and responsibility. But what I look for in a driver, sometimes it, it, it differs, right? Um, if it's a older driver, I will always ask them, well, why haven't you became? What 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 stopped you from becoming a owner operator, right? Because some older driver they want that. They want to be an owner operator. They, they have the experience. They have the knowledge, the training, the skills, and I'll get different answers, right? But when I when I get a driver that I know wants to be an owner operator, he's 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 in the mindset of taking on more responsibility, which means when he's in that truck, he's gonna take care of that truck. He's gonna make sure that the PMs are done, that the oil changes are done, that he's he's doing his pre-trips and post-trips every day. Um he he's making sure that your equipment is, is top notch and he wants to do more within trucking. So that's someone that that you know I look I look for. You know, I ask them, are do you want to be an owner operator? And if so, let us mentor you to the point where that, that happens for you, right? Um, I look for drivers who have a clean MBR, um, at least three years experience. This is what I'm looking for. Um, someone who doesn't have to be home every day, right? Someone who's, who's willing to be flexible. Even if they want to be home every day, they say, hey, well, I'll go out for two days at a time, come back and, and you know, go home that day. And, and so someone that's willing to work with us, um, someone that knows a little bit about the truck, right? Because some drivers, you know, the, the worst thing that I hear is a driver who has 10 years experience and they say they don't know anything about the truck. At 10 years, you should know if there's a leak in your coolant reservoir or your holes, right? Um, you should know what glad hands are. I mean, it's just a simple stuff that like, even I know, and I don't have 10 years driving CDL, right? But you have to, at some point, take the time to look under that hood and learn some things. I don't expect you to be able to drop a transmission right on the side of the road but I do expect you to know how to do a proper pre-trip of your truck. I do expect you to know that, you know, um, it's low on cooling for whatever reason, go get some cooling. Like, you know, you, some of these things as a driver, you should take more pride in. And that's what we look for. Um, someone who's definitely willing to become a team player. We hear it all the time. Um, I think that word is, is so overly used in this trucking industry. You know, someone who wants to be a team player, but that is exactly what we're looking for. Someone who I know that they're going to wake up and drop those lows on time. They're picking and dropping on time. They're they're route planning. They they know when there's certain type of inclement uh, you know inclement weather 
coming their way. Like drivers that just pay attention to what they do. Be be proud of your craft. Like be proud of your craft. And that's how you make the upwards of 2000 a week easy. It's just by showing that dedication to the company, right? And then, and then of course, the company, if it's a legitimate good company, they're going to take care of their driver. They're going to bonus them. They're going to make sure that they're comfortable in the truck. They're going to make sure they have microwaves and refrigerators and give them as much home time as possible. It's a, it's, a, it's a give and take in this industry as far as drivers go. But we are actively looking for drivers. So if you know any drivers, shoot them our way. Uh, we definitely take care of them. Oh, of course. I'm sure somebody is going to reach out to you. Um, again, I want you to continue with that topic you are talking about. So you said if somebody wants to become an own operator, there's a way you can help them, you know, like uh, start out driving for you and then mentor them into becoming own, own, own operators. Absolutely. I think, um, you know, obviously to me, the, 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 the office side of it is easy because I've been doing it. That's all I know. Right. So to me, it's like, this is a breeze. I can easily run a truck, run 10 trucks, run 50 trucks because of how we have everything processed and set up. Right. So to me, nine times out of 10, when a, when a driver with experience say that they want to be an owner operator, but they just haven't been given that opportunity. Um, a, a lot of times it's, it's finances, right. That you have to put that huge deposit down on the truck. Um, it may be the credit or it just may be that they don't know the paperwork side, how to properly factor a load, how to properly look at a Raycon and, and really see what needs to go on that Raycon contracts between them. And if they have a few trucks, you know, them and the drivers, um, them and their dispatchers, like what type of contracts you need to have, what verbiage needs to go in those contracts, um, how to handle an audit because you have to get audited. Most of, most of the companies now, I think are like 18 months, but when we first got started, you got audited within the first couple months. Um, so how to properly handle it in audit, right? Um, citations, like a lot of this stuff, drivers have been driving, but they've never seen that side of the business. And since we have a, a pretty solid knowledge base on that side of the business, it's easy for me to teach someone. Um, even as far as our structure, how we communicate with our drivers in, in group settings to where, you know, we're just going over certain things that happen on the road, um, getting on a FaceTime or getting on a Zoom meeting and just kind of going over how the week went with the drivers. That's, that's helpful too, um, because we're keeping that driver in the loop. Uh, we're teaching them about um, detention time and layover. Um, so I think um, just having that experience on this side and the driver having the experience on that side, when you marry the two, it's so easy to create a uh, environment for an owner operator. Uh, uh, talk to me again, uh, more about uh, how you communicate with your drivers because I'm trying to see the differences between big companies and a company like yours that is more of a medium-sized company. You, you know what? what and I, and I you love when you talk about big companies and small companies, right? There's no big companies that's training their drivers to be owner operators, right? There, there's no there's no larger companies that's showing the drivers rate cons and what needs to go on these rate cons. They may dispatch the load out, but there's so much stuff that smaller companies can can kind of pay attention to and be a little more detailed with their drivers. Um, we do it, it's real simple. Um, we take the driver, the owner operator, the, the driver, the owner, or, or the owner operator, if the driver is the owner operator, the dispatcher and myself, and we group chat all day long um, on every single load, every issue, every tire blowout. You know, you have four people in one group problem solving. And um, and I think that's that's unique because you, you get different perspectives on how to solve the, the issue from four different people to include the driver, right? Because it's a team and we want him to have his input. Um, we may say, hey, there's a Loves 20 miles away, but we may be in his hometown or his cousin or someone who he knows who can fix this a little faster, a little less expensive. So we always brainstorm within the four of us um, or five of us, two owners for that truck. And we come up with constant solutions, right? So. That's how we communicate. That's how we're able to educate these drivers on our side of things because they're seeing it. They're actually seeing it in a, in a live group chat on how to deal with certain things that that with the normal larger company, you know, two, three thousand fleet, uh, they're not going to take the time to communicate with their driver. Just a number, right? Driver number one, two, three, four, five, right? And it's different when you have a smaller company with just twenty drivers. We're able to 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 kind of you know give some more insight on what goes on on this side. Of trucking. Now, uh, most of your your drivers are over the road, right? Right. Uh, but I also heard you say that you pay them on a salary. Can you explain right. more about uh, how that works? 
Right. So depending on your NVR, depending on your experience, you're going to start at 1800 a week. Right. Um, so, so, so that, that's how we do it. And the reason why we don't pay per mile is because it puts a lot of pressure on that dispatcher. Um, when you, when you're paying per mile, it puts a lot of pressure on that driver, you know, God forbid he's on a reefer low and he's been sitting for five hours to get unloaded. Right. Of course there's attention time after the first two or three hours. Um, but, but it's just, it's too much of a stressor for us to pay by the mile. It's too much stress on the driver to try to get those miles in. So now you have drivers who are extremely tired, but they want to keep driving because they know the more they drive, the more money they make, right? We're alleviating that. We don't want any accidents on the highway and put any pedestrians, um, you know, in, in that path of, of, of having to be a part of an accident, all because our driver wanted to hit his quota, his personal quota, whatever goals that is financially, because he's getting paid by the mile. Um, so it, it alleviates drivers doing, if it's not a governor on the truck, you know, 80 miles per hour, 75 miles per hour, in a 55 mile per hour zone, clearly because he's trying to put as many miles in that truck. Um, so the way we do it is no stress. 1800 to start, depending on your MVR, it could be a little bit more. Um, and how long you've had your CDL, what endorsements you may have. Um, and then, of course, when they're home for those two, three days off the road, we're still paying them that $1,800. So the pay isn't reflected um, any type of decrease when they're at home. So so that that's how we do it. That, that's how we do it. We think it's fair. Um, it takes away a lot of stress. And the driver knows what he's going to get every single week, right? That does not change. You know, and the one thing I hate about the miles, I've seen drivers who come in, who interview, and they say, well, based on the miles, you know, I made 1100 the week before and the, and the week prior to that, it was 14. Like, you cannot predict how much you're going to make. So at, as a grown man and woman, how do you pay your bills, right? You know you have yeah. a set amount of bills every month, but you don't know how much you're going to make every month based on miles or commission of the load, right? So that's why we pay a salary. You're able to um, dictate your funding a little bit different, and it pays more. Uh, so how do you um, how do you get to – because – I don't know how the, I should phrase this question. How do you get to make sure that you are utilizing their time? Uh, because some drivers, uh, there are drivers uh, that want to make, you know, like maybe per hour, be paid by the hour, but then they become lazy because they are like, oh, I'm on the clock. Right. I call it we, milking the company, some, right? I'll so listen, how do you... We got some hell of a dispatchers. Our dispatchers are on it. And again, in our dispatch training classes, and we have one March the 12th, the, the way the way we train dispatchers is to dispatch that truck as if it's your truck. And we, we train them that way so that when they start dispatching people who are who are new to being owner operators, people are new to being owners who are leased on under us, trucks that we purchase, new drivers that we bring on, they know how to run that truck, right? Doesn't matter if it's a truck I paid for, it doesn't matter if it's someone who leased on under our company, they're gonna run it all the same. And and what I mean by that is they're tracking everything. They're tracking the driver. They're tracking the truck. They're constantly calling the shippers and receivers to make sure they're loaded. We don't. We don't have time for lazy drivers. Um, do, do it exist? Yes, it does. It just doesn't exist on our clock because we have everybody in one group chat. Someone's already always paying attention. Hold on. This truck should have picked up at twelve o'clock. It's two o'clock. Let's call and see if he's already loaded. And if not, then let's just call the shipper and see if that truck has been loaded. We'll check the tracking. We got multiple trackings on the truck, truck, trailer, and the driver. So we know if that truck is moving. Uh, we have the aerial view of the truck. Like we don't play. So we have, so you say, well, how do you prevent a driver from, you know, as 12 o'clock, he say he what didn't get loaded till three o'clock, but we know he got loaded at 12. We just pay attention to all the details. You have to, the devil is in the details. You have to pay attention to all the details in trucking. Hence why you gotta constantly be thinking, right? Um, you got to think like a driver. You got to think like a shipper. You got to think like a broker. Um, you got to know how to properly handle insurance, right? You got to know what the insurance broker's position is and what their job is. And um, it's like in trucking, if you want to get to that level, you have to do your homework. You have to pay attention to the details. You have to learn from your first mistakes. Um, and that, and that's one thing with the drivers. They love us. I mean, we, it's, you know, we're just one big team. Everybody has a role to play. There's no egos on this side of things, right? Um, you can tell from how we post on social media, there's no egos here. We're just having fun. We're making some money. We have a fun and we putting people in a good position in a position that they may not have been in with another company. You know, you turn the owner operator, you turn the drivers into owner operators, dispatchers into fleet owners, right? So the whole, the whole goal is to keep everybody 
elevated, make sure that they're reaching whatever goals they, they set. That's what we do. Um, and I think that might be the big difference between our company, big or small, than a lot of companies. Like we put an emphasis on everybody that's on the team, right? And that, that creates an environment where a driver doesn't want to quit. Uh, talk to us about dispatching. You, I heard you say that uh, you think dispatching is what is the best way to get into trucking because you get to understand the real the way the trucking works. So tell us about uh, if, say, for example, I wanted to get into dispatching. Uh, why do you think is the best way to get into trucking to learn about that business? Well, one is the least expensive route, right? Um, one thing that we learned during the pandemic is a lot of people got spoiled with working from home, right? That's something that never happened in this country before on that type of level. So um, it gives people an opportunity to stay home and continue to earn income, right? And it's it's so inexpensive to get into dispatch. You have a cell phone, a laptop, maybe a dry eraser board, um, a few notebooks. I mean, it's so inexpensive. A couple low boards, some may cost like DAT $80, some cost like truck stop $150. Some are free, like TQL. Um, that's free gang, by the way. So when you when you look at it, the overhead is 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 really a, a, a small amount, right? Um, the other side of truck of dispatching is it is to me, it's the only position in dispatch in, in trucking where you deal with the insurance broker, you deal with certificates of insurance, you deal with the driver, you deal with the ELD to make sure the driver is in compliance with his drive time. You deal with the owner or the owner operator, if, the, if it's an owner and a driver or an owner operator as a driver. Um, man, like dispatch, like dispatching is, you, you learn about the type of equipment, the type of trucks, what's the best trucks to haul, and, you know, what type of trailers, what goes on the trailers. Uh, man, um, you learn about contracts, rate cards, BOLs, like it's, 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 the only, it's the only part of trucking where you are really tapping into every aspect of trucking just to get this one load right some of these loads you got to get a certificate of insurance from the broker unless you can do it yourself and, and then and then you get the rate card i mean from the from your insurance broker and then you get the rate card from the actual broker unless you're talking directly to the customer you're definitely speaking with the drivers every day you're going back and forth with the brokers and you know to get the rate cards and the bol signed and then you're factoring so you got to deal with the factoring company like it's the only it just it just never ends for a dispatcher but the beauty of it is our dispatchers can work from the plane, they can work from the cabins, they can work from home. Um, there's nowhere in the world, as long as you have a signal, that the dispatcher can't work from. And so that's the upside of being a dispatcher. So uh, with, with, your, with your dispatching company, your dispatchers are in different places, they're not in one building? Absolutely, absolutely, they're, they're, they're in different, your, your volume is really low, I can barely hear you, but. All right. um, but yeah, the, the dispatchers work from different states. Yeah. Yeah, we got a couple in Atlanta, but the but the rest are in different different places. That's that's the that's the beauty of it. And what we learned from I had a, a, an office for 10 years over in Riverdale. And uh during the pandemic, we ended up keeping it for almost a year and then we just shut it down because we were able to 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 allow our employees to work from home. And we've never looked back since. Um so it's it, it's a, it gives the again, it gives the dispatch, the ability to work from anywhere, that's great. There's very small overhead for for um, for a dispatcher. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if you come on, if you work for certain companies, you know, like our, like us, and we hired you, you wouldn't have to uh, really pay for anything. Of course, we already would have the load board set up and, and all that good stuff. So, so tell us about, uh, you said you do dispatching uh, training. Uh, there's a class coming up. Tell us more about that. Uh, well, yeah, so class coming up March uh, March twelfth at Saturday at nine o'clock via Zoom. Of course, it's virtual, um, and and unlike a lot of other dispatch training classes, like everybody has something that they hang their hat on. So so I'm really proud of everybody who has dispatch training classes because it's not it's not an easy task, right? You don't know what you know until you can teach it. So you know, salute hat goes off to everybody out there that's that's dispatching, um, and that's that's offering dispatch training classes. Um, our class again, we dispatch it from we train from a, from a from an owner perspective, right? So that you, the way our dispatchers are taught, there's a breakdown at two, three in the morning. You handle it, right? If there's an issue with the driver, you handle it. Um, if the driver needs to go get a scale ticket, you make sure you remind them. If the driver needs to drop a load at nine o'clock, you're calling him at seven to make sure that he or she is in route. We don't just book a load or train you how to book a load and pass the buck. No, you're gonna follow that load from start to finish. 
Um, so it, and it teaches you how to solicit carriers, um, which isn't as difficult as people think it is. It's just work. You got to put that work in. You got to constantly promote market and try to search for these carriers that want to use your services. Right. Um, we teach people how to file federal filings because some dispatchers want to another stream of income. You can charge someone to file their federal filings for them. Um, so, I mean, it's, we teach everything, man. We just from, again, like I said, from, from handling COIs, um, insurance brokers, dealing with the insurance brokers. Um, we even provide you with a, with a PowerPoint with the actual links for everything that we discussed as far as, you know, if I want to follow UCR or BOC3 or if the IRP, here's the links for those. Um, we just, we teach it from, again, from our own perspective. So we're going to teach you way more than just dispatch training, right? We want you to know about the trucking industry that you're getting into so that it's easier for you to understand the concept of dispatching. So we cover everything. And how long is the class? Um, it's, it's anywhere from four to five hours, typically five, because there's always a lot of questions being asked. And then the one thing that we do offer, which I know some people, they charge for mentorship. They charge thousands of dollars for mentorship, which they should, which they rightfully should. Um, but after we, after you, you know, you take our class, we don't charge for mentorship. So we want to make sure that you are using the information that we provided, not just you paying $500 for the class and that's it. We want to make sure that you're getting carriers. We want to make sure that, you know, you become that owner operator. That's what we wanted to become by taking this class. Like, so we make sure we mentor you. There's no limit. Um, there's no expiration date on mentorship. Anybody who takes our class, we're going to mentor you until you get to that point where you feel like you don't need us anymore. All right. Um, you did say that, um, you did say that you have mentorship coming up on March, not mentorship, class coming up on March 12th. Yeah. You did say that you need uh, four drivers. Absolutely. So for those that um, may be looking at this, watching this and like, oh, I want to be one of those drivers. How do they get in touch with you? Um, Keeptruckingtransportation.com. Um, that's our, that's our web. You can actually um, hit me up on Instagram, which I'm, I'm very active on Instagram. So Instagram is at Maddie daddy time, M A D D Y D A D D Y T I M E. You can hit me with a DM, um, or you can just text them off my phone, uh, 404-964-5578. My, my nails. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Nelms. It's been a pleasure really having you uh, showing us, you know, like the various sides of the industry. I really enjoyed your uh, your interview that you did on the Hazo podcast, and I'm sure people are going to enjoy this and they will be able to reach out to you. I appreciate your time, sir. I appreciate you. Thanks a lot for having me. All right. Bye-bye. Awesome.